there, Coles here again with another video and happy Easter to you all. I'm recording this on Saturday before um, Sunday, <laughs> Easter Sunday. So this is going to be a bit of a progress video on my Boba Fett armour and well armoury weapons whatever you want to call it. Um, so first of all uh, I started on the left gauntlet and I first created a prototype. I know it's just cardboard, but it was basically to get some kind of basic measurements and how things are going to fit in. Obviously, we've got the buttons on there and we've got a, a light on the back and the rocket on the top. Um, I did actually have a keypad in here, but I've since removed it since I'm actually using it for the proper one eventually. Um, but here is the real one. I've had it... 3D printed, so basically modelled it and then, yeah, had it printed as I don't have a printer. Um, we've got buttons on there. Uh, we've got a switch on here, which, watch this. It's a taser. Um, but, the, I mean, the purpose of it is actually the ignition for the flamethrower. Um, obviously the fuel will come out of there, and, uh, yeah, we'll be ignited by the spark. And now I also, in this one, in this one here, I have a laser. It's not a very powerful laser yet. I'm going to put a, you know, a good burning laser in. Um, it's currently also not hooked up, so it should be this front button here that um, makes it work. Um, I actually have, uh, I actually have this clip from the other week of it working when I tested my flamethrower too. Uh, so yeah, that's quite cool. Um, obviously, I haven't got a... Well, actually, I do have a printed rocket. I'll go and get that. Here. Um, the problem was it came attached to that. Uh, so I actually had to rip it off, which kind of snapped it a bit. Um, but yeah, as I said in the previous video, I plan to put like a model rocket in the back of this. So it'll actually, you know, psh, fly. Um, so the flamethrower, how does it work? Um, so obviously there is the final barrel, which goes to about there. And then on, well, actually you can't see on the inside really, but if I move that out the way, inside here, I don't think you can see, the light's not very good. Um, hold on, get a torch. All right, here we go. So inside there, as you can see, there is, well, there's this bit here, the end of the pipe that goes to the, the solenoid, which is obviously this thing here. Um, but the bit it actually attaches to is right here. So if you imagine, which way around does it go? So it goes in that way, and then there's like a screw cap to go on there. And basically, the pipe attaches to there. And then, well, this one, this part here will attach onto there. And then the other end of that attaches onto the propane and butane gas. It is a mix, unfortunately. Now, this switch here, it's actually a light-up switch. It's pretty cool. Quite like those. Um, so that controls the solenoid, opens it up. Obviously, it's not actually currently connected properly. Obviously, on this top bit here is where the keypad's going to be. Um, there was like a plastic one 
the, I ripped it off because obviously I'm going to put a real one on. All right, yeah. Uh, so that's that. That's the high voltage spark generator thing right there. Uh, this is obviously the battery pack, but I'm going to change that because I have another battery. So I'm going to be using this battery here, which is a 4.5 volt battery from uh, a PS4 controller. Um, I guess, uh, I, I suppose I was fortunate enough to have a broken one. If that's, if that's considered fortunate, I don't know. Um, yeah, so basically that's going to attach to this little board here. This is going to be for charging the battery because obviously these are rechargeable batteries. So this little board here, this actually came from one of those arc lighters that I took apart. Why is it not focusing? Hello? Oh, there we go. Okay. So obviously we have a switch. We have the micro USB input to charge it. And then the two terminals of the battery connect to these um, things here. Essentially, this has the same voltage as these three AA batteries together in this massive solid thing. So obviously, as you can see, it is much smaller. It's much thinner and just a lot smaller in general. So, yeah. Now, if we move that along for a minute. So, another part I got printed was obviously these. These are only made of plastic, obviously. Um, but I'm going to use this steel here to, well, to, to make them out of steel, of course. Um, but yeah, and then they'll be attached to these gloves, like, like so, so it'll look like that. So, these are cut proof gloves, like slash proof. Um, Hopefully they'll also have some heat resistance, which I think they will. But I think ultimately these shields should help against like the heat from the flamethrower. Um, yeah, because I mean the only like if as long as you have your fist like that, the only heat that's going to be felt is against that bit of the hand, potentially. Um, and if we look at pictures of the the lit, this left gauntlet, obviously the barrels are a lot shorter. Um, like they barely come out of this thing here, but I wanted the flames like as far away from my hand as possible So that's why I've done it like that, which you can you can probably um, You can probably understand I think All right, and now for the right gauntlet, so I didn't do a prototype of this one um, I got it 3d printed along with that one and that is what it currently looks like kind of destroyed this top part and I didn't have any of that paint left and I thought this was kind of the same colour but clearly not it's just a bit of a mess I need to sort that out um but yeah on this one I mean the other one has a hinge as well we have this metal hinge which we're going to paint the same colour as the whole gauntlet I think um this thing here to like fasten your hand into um I ultimately want to make it so you can tighten it from the outside, but I haven't figured that out yet. And um, yeah, and then so we have the dart launcher here. And these are the buttons. I lost one of the buttons, so I, again, with my broken PS4 controller, I used the options button as my third button there. So we have three buttons. And it's just a spring-loaded uh, dart launcher, this one. But it is powerful as heck. Exhibit A, I accidentally shot myself in the face. Yeah. All right, and the other part we have so far is this hose. Um, that comes out the back. And I'm kind of thinking it's going to be some kind of maybe gas... Um, well, not launch it, but like a spray thing. So you could maybe have like, I don't know, pepper spray or, I don't know, chloroform or something. <laughs> I don't know. And this is also a pretty thin hose, so I, I don't think it would take much pressure. And the only reason I use that is because I had to put, I was putting the dart launcher in and then I was suddenly like, holy crap, if I want to put 
some kind of sprayer launcher in here. I need to do it now because it has to obviously be above this part because I went in because I had to kind of dig in from the inside. That will all be covered up and filled in. So I know it's a bit of a mess. And uh, what we have left to do on this gauntlet is obviously the other side. Um, so you can see like this tube going through there. It doesn't actually go all the way through. Unfortunately. So I'm going to have to drill it all out somehow. I'll put a metal, metal tube in there. And this bit here is also meant to be a metal tube. I mean it is a, it's a plastic tube. Um, but it should be a metal tube. That goes down here and then bends and joins onto that one. Um, so what I'm thinking is having like like I have on there, like the like two darts that are basically uh, a spark generator that are attached to copper wire, like in a stun gun or taser, um, and then they can be fired out and hit a subject, and then. Well, you can basically tase them by putting a voltage through them. But then, in the book of Boba Fett, when he was escaping the Sarlacc bit, we also saw that he had a f he had a flamethrower in here. Um, so I'm kind of thinking maybe if I make the other pipeline going into it, like propane or something, and then we can use the two prongs that the like for the stun gun as the ignition for the propane too. So then it could be a stun gun and a flamethrower. Um, so I chose to have it as like a... I chose, I've decided to do like a stun gun instead of a like grapple hook because I just think it will be more effective. Um, obviously it kind of does the same thing but then it also can, well, tase the enemy. I'm also considering putting two switches in here. As, or is it in there? Because there is meant to be two switches on this side of the gauntlet. Um, but I haven't got round to that yet. And the last thing uh, we're going to look at uh, today is, well, this underside bit here. Which is where the hidden blades are going to go. If I move that out of the way a second. So for the blades, I did like a prototype. Um, obviously made out of Lego and cardboard. Um, and obviously this is a lot bulkier, it's not going to be able to fit in there, but this should only be kind of a few millimetres thick, because I'm going to make the blades out of that steel there. Um, and also the gear bits will be attached to the blades, if that makes sense. I also have this, this blade here, um, because I couldn't really get it to like fit in with the rest of them. Um, so if you look at this picture of his blades, he does have one that is kind of that shape, but sod it. It doesn't really matter how many blades we have, we just need some hidden blades. So, it'll basically be a quarter rotation of a, a servo motor, and that's what the blades will look like. Obviously, the cardboard's kind of getting caught because it's not perfectly straight. But I think that works pretty well, you know what I mean? The blades are pretty nice. Obviously, they're slipping because it's like the cross-shaped Lego things. And these just have holes. They're not kind of cross-shaped holes. Yeah, I think that works pretty nicely, to be honest. So that's how I'm going to cut my blades, I think. Yay! Ah. A day in the life of Boba Fett. Or should I say, a wannabe Boba Fett. And that's my Hasbro helmet. As I mentioned in the last video, I do plan on putting a range, an actual rangefinder in there. Um, with either... Well, probably like LiDAR or something, which is obviously like, it's like radar, but with light. Well, laser light. Well, I guess the only thing left to show you is the dart launcher. 
Now the thing is with this, it's actually really hard to get the the darts in because um, basically the the springs are really kind of solid. So I mean, I'll probably have to put them in and then press them against that sheet of steel to get them in. I think I may have damaged it a bit putting it in this. Um, so it doesn't seem to work as well as it did before. Uh, so obviously this is the, the ballistic dart launcher from my other video. Yeah, no, I didn't get them in. What? Let's see, what could I use? Oh my god, these are so... What the hell? Okay, I've got one of them in. And the second one. So yeah, ah, it's not going to be the quickest thing to reload, that's for sure. Alright, so there we have, we have our darts inside. Um, yeah, so I guess we should probably test it. Yeah, right, just imagine that was really smooth to go in. I just forced it in. Now, if any of you, for whatever reason, don't think it's very powerful, then, well, refer back to that picture of my nose. Then watch this. Bullseye. Damn straight. Let's go see where we hit. Okay, so one of them hit right there. The other one actually knocked it off. And then the other one hit the centerpiece. This part. Apparently I've hit that twice before. It's not very it's not stuck on very well. Oh well, whatever. Right, so that is it for this week um, once again happy Easter and if you enjoyed the video and would like to see more on this project then hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing and I will see you well sometime next week <laughs>